Aloha and salutations to everyone. This is Archangel. Gentlemen, chances are you excuse, exalt, even worship females in some way, shape, or form. What? Not me. I reject relationships. Well, folks, just because a guy isn't sexually involved with a female does not mean he is not a loyal parishioner of the Divine Feminine. In fact, some of the most misandristic female pandering guys are those who have no relationship or physical intimacy with females at all. So you are not fooling anyone. Some of the biggest white knight jelly-filled gyno drones are not having sexual congress with the females they adore. There is a quasi-state amongst awakened males where they have taken the red pill and they recognize romance and female interaction through sexual attraction as a trap, a blight that has enslaved even imprisoned many a male. Such males realize sexual interactions with females as detrimental or they understand romance as a conjured farce, yet they still possess romantic hearts and feeling depths that long for emotional communion with the objects of human beauty and soft demeanor human females. These guys still labor under the false social tenant that females are the only appropriate receptacle for males' deepest, most personal feelings, hopes, and dreams, rather than swallow the truth, which is females actually resent being males' therapists or confessional of weaknesses, since, in fact, chicks expect males to be their solid, stoic, emotional dumpster, as well as their human wallet, manual labor, errand boy, bodyguard, whipping post, etc., 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 So, males, wise to reality, will nevertheless develop a crush on a female and invest in a platonic relationship to receive female interaction and the emotional suckle they still crave, even in the absence of physical affection. Guys will find a female in their environment to dote over, a female they see as safe to invest their hopes, dreams, fears, and weaknesses in as they search for caring reciprocity from a female, and they hypothesize they will incite genuine interaction in platonic associations with chicks, since all the deceit, manipulation, and power struggles that accompany sexual interaction is off the table. Guys everywhere have these platonic crushes where he fancies mom or his niece or his coworker as a pure male-female interaction of fondness. However, unfortunately for guys, even if sex is not part of the interaction, females in platonic associations are not necessarily authentic because they still are driven to vet you for utility. You are not a friend. You are a male that they do not have to manipulate with sex. But you still might be a good white knight or a good handyman or an acceptable emotional tampon. Males may invest genuine fondness in a platonic exchange, but females are wired to seek out utility from all sons, dads, grandpas, lovers, anonymous males at the store. Some males have been burned by female parasitism in life. Others may be forced into sexless lives because they are physically undesirable. There are many avenues males find to platonic crushes on females. Now, These males are still human and excited by the chemicals hot chicks elicit in them. So some guys aim for the fence with a female who is completely out of their bargaining purview. Perhaps a female that only pays attention to them because she is a captive audience, like a waitress, the counter girl at the gym or mini mart, or a stripper. They frequent areas where females play nice with them because it is her job. Now, there is still sexual innuendo lurking in the background of the guy who frequents the strip club, even though he realizes he will never have her. So this is a platonic crush by default. Other crushes are absolutely devoid of any sexual atmosphere. These are males that invest heavily in familial relationships, such as sister, daughter, mother, aunt, etc. A relationship they understand will always be platonic, yet they can pour out their inner longings, their desires, their aspirations, their inner feelings and life disappointments through doting on a female interaction untainted by basal carnality and all the manipulation it entails. Some guys may even be sexually active and have platonic crushes at the same time. 
these males are female codependent in all aspects of life. Yet, he keeps a girlfriend, wife, lover, or booty calls separate from his inner exaltation of feminine, as exemplified in his platonic crush on his niece or high school buddy's sister or his goddaughter. You see, given enough time and experience, males come to understand sexual interaction as temporary, tainted, shallow interactions, yet being acclimated to feminine exaltation in a gynocentric existence. Thus, they still have need for proxy worship of the feminine. And, well, they happen to have a mother, sister, or granddaughter they can really pour genuine fondness into, justifying it a safe investment of emotion, free of courtship chemical influence. But this is a false assumption, because again, females are programmed to take from males, no matter their relation. And two, males still flirt with chemical release when they indulge any crush on females. The chemical ratios simply alter. It may be less adrenaline fueling sexual appetite and more oxytocin spurring emotional bonding. Either way, males still get chemical reward from platonic relations and those rewards influence thoughts and behaviors. Guys chasing female validation is... Sad, cringeworthy, whether seeing dudes beg and plead their way through sexual affection negotiations, also known as relationships, or whether you see it in platonic crushes. Witnessing males' need for female approval is pathetic. However, worse yet is seeing males who know females as parasitic, yet pandering to them anyway. Even if females do not return the same degree of fondness, males will still dote on a female as cathartic release, a temporary oasis from the cruel claustrophobic confines of a gynocentric existence financed on the expendability of male blood. This one-way investment is much like someone investing emotion into an inanimate object, like a car. The point is not actual fondness reciprocity, but rather catharsis for the caregiver and female apathy for male welfare is no different than your car's indifference for your well-being. And male crushes on females play to their utility usurping agendas, and they are happy to play along, whether family members or otherwise. Females like to be lavished with fondness, which suggests acquiescence to her. This helps her inventory assets. Females live for male deferral because it communicates controllability, which may be parlayed into durable utility when she requires. I have known so many a male that has realized male devaluation and the utter failure romantic interaction is, in juxtaposition to the happiness overflowing soulmates together forever divine holy union propaganda we sell male-female antagonism as. It's not romance, it's affection negotiation. Still, most dudes adhere to feminine angelic archetypes, and they need a form of worship. So they find an untouchable female, such as a family member, and crush on them. Meaning they can pedestalize this crush as wondrous, pure, because monkey urges have not, cannot taint this interaction. Crushing afflicts all types of males. Some are good-looking with no problem attracting parasites peddling sexuality, while others may be some form of involuntary celibate, meaning females do not engage in physical affection negotiations with them because they are not conventionally attractive or wealthy. They may be socially awkward or have proclivities or interests outside the streamlined norm and would be considered freaks. Some are simply run-of-the-mill fathers or co-workers or uncles who may or may not be married. Yet, as stated previous, given enough time and experiential interaction, males will, on some level, realize romance as a farce. However, they want to worship the feminine, to offer homage to those who they believe as angelic despite all the pain and torment they have suffered at the hands of these breasted deities they prostrate themselves before. So, males divert feelings of purity into platonic crushes, wherein they can offer holy, unsoiled homage to the feminine. Males find their way to crushing out of necessity, because either they are forced celibate or they are cognizant of gynocentrism. To the awakened male, crushing seems a gracious alternative, but it does not come without consequence. You see, in the face of gynocentrism, most males have a split personality and purpose. 
part of them finds the wisdom, the genius, the camaraderie of brothers brought together by shared battle and suffering as inspirational. Yet there is the other side of them who has unresolved desires, sleeper gynocentric programming lying in wait to sabotage. This side of males feels cheated out of relationship experiences everybody else seems to get. They feel slighted by life, the universe, and despite the legitimacy of gynocentrism, misandry, and male discardability, their unresolved wounds cause a schism in their mind and emotions. So while they agree with and find refuge in male empowerment because we speak truth, yet another side harbors female exaltation as they worship and further pedestalize what they have been denied the emotional and physical affections of attractive females. This is one pitfall accosting male empowerment, this schizophrenia, wherein you realize female toxicity and the environment of male disposability caused by species-wide gynocentrism, yet still being a heterosexual male attracted to pretty shiny things, you begin to set up the pedestalization process of females, wherein you understand them as bad for your health and well-being, but the forbidden fruit is always more desirable. And many times, guys will build up females in their minds as dangerous, but more desirable because of the risk factor. This is a human curiosity described by the euphemism, the grass is greener on the other side. Translated, monks will think that players have it made with hot chicks everywhere, and the players may think the monk has it made without all the stress and expense. So, in the deep recesses of awakened male minds, some have a shrine decorated to femininity, because the more they reject hot chicks without resolving this sexual desire, the more they see women as the forbidden fruit, and that carries a desirability premium, which actually elevates the feminine in the minds of the awakened versus the average pillar females occupy in the minds of the average shovel servicing the vaginasty. If you look, you can see males crushing all day, every day, regardless of their degree of gynocentric awareness. I have seen this countless times. Usually, an aesthetically challenged male will develop a fierce fondness for a sister, a mother, a cousin, a co-worker, a daughter, and that male will do anything for her and defend her even if she is in the wrong. This is a male exercising subservience to gynocentrism in the absence of sexual affections. One guy I observed purported to understand red pills and male devaluation, yet I watched him embark on non-sexual crushes one after the other. First, it was a counter girl. Then it was a co-worker of mine. Then another. He would fawn over each. Maybe in his mind, he thought there was something. Yet, even after all the males he has betrayed, all those females he crushed on have gone their separate ways, and he has nothing to show for these crushes. But I am sure he is on to some other captive audience female crush somewhere. Crushing is a form of relationship in the absence of sexual affection or validation. You see, the only difference between friendship and romance is the invocation of sexual relations, physical affection. However, the white knighting remains uniform across all interactions. And in fact, platonic relations tend to invoke more white knightery. For instance, fathers will white knight for daughters or sons for mothers more than average guys would for a date. Gentlemen, being awakened means nothing if you still serve the same dictator, gynocentrism. You may eschew sexual relations, yet you hold a candle for femininity in the Mr. Hyde part of your personality, and thus you will service dote and white knight more for a friend or family crush than you would for some broad you're hoping would give you fellatio after the bar. The point is, even awakened males find alternative means to pay homage to femininity, since they still elevate them in some area of their mind, where they still believe all the propaganda that males are evil and women are good. Most males have never overcome the brainwashing. At best, they consciously contain it. Yet, at any time, old files, old programming will catch you unawares and prompt a longing for interaction and worship of our living angels.
and with platonic crushing, males can resolve the knowledge of sexual relations as toxic on a logical level and still bow to their superiors and offer value contribution through platonic subservience, service, and loyalty, thus exalting the feminine as purity in the individual thoughts and beliefs of the expendable doormats upon who all life depends. Understand that crushing is more than just caring for a family member. It is excessive fondness fixation on a female as emotional proxy for romantic longings unrealized. Since the caring idealism of unconditionality branding male-female physical affection unions never had validity. Friends, stand with me, live free.